Hello there, my fellow fans of Warhammer Fantasy, and welcome back to another episode of Lore in this wonderful setting. Today, I wanted to get started on another topic and playlist within Warhammer Fantasy Lore, and one that will also cover a few topics which many people have asked me about in the past. By this time, you probably already know a great deal about the Empire and Bretonia as they are the biggest of the human realms in the old world. However, they are not the only realms, as several other, smaller nations do exist. And that is what this series is gonna be all about, the minor nations of the old world, and even beyond. For starters, we're gonna cover Tylea, and, word to the wise, I will not be able to do it in just one episode. So today, you get an overview of Tylea, followed by more details in future episodes. I am your host, the Grimdark Narrator, and without further ado, let us proceed, shall we? The lands of Tylea is a fertile landscape, hugging the coast of the warm and tranquil Tylean Sea. The region is separated from the surrounding continents by high mountain ranges. To the north run the Irana Mountains, the peaks of which stand like a sawtooth against the northern sky. Beyond those are the even higher and more dangerous peaks of the vaults. To the east runs the rugged Apuccini Mountains, which divide the fertile plains of Tylea from the harsh wilderness of the border princes. In former times, fierce tribes of orcs would swarm out of the badlands, cross the lands of the border princes, and raid the riches of Tylea. Tylea is a far warmer and sunnier climate than the lands of the Empire or Bretonia. Indeed, due to the high temperature, many lands in the southern regions can be quite arid in high summer. The lands near the coastal plains are naturally green and fertile, and as a result very easily cultivated. There is a very rich and abundant land for farmers and nobles to live in. The seas are also full of fish and the foothills of the mountains are covered in open woodland, which is excellent hunting country for the nobility. The Tyleans are well known for their eating and drinking, and there is a very tremendous rivalry between the Bretonians and the Tyleans as to which knows more about good food. The Apuccini Mountains are a range of rugged and bare elevation with sparse vegetation along its slopes but they are still not as cold or snowbound as the higher mountains in the north. The Abasco Mountains are very much the same, but the Irana Mountains, being part of the vaults, are much colder and more treacherous than the rest of the mountain ranges. The blighted marshes are exactly as their name suggests, a vast expanse of bleak and dangerous stagnations located at the northern region of Tylea. With little resources or benefits to have in the marshes, barely any Tyleans ever venture into them, and those that do would recount creatures resembling rats but walking upright. Indeed, these marshes are the lands of the Skaven, and its own capital city of Skaven Blight is located near the ruins of a once proud city that rested in the depths of the marshes. The Tylean Sea is naturally calm and warm during most of the year, it is tempestuous on occasion, but only treacherous around the rock islands of the coast of Tobaro and in the Pirate's Current. Outside of those, the sea is calm and easy sailing for smaller ships and sleek galleys. Even before the High Elves abandoned the Old World, Tylean tribes were already settling along the fertile coastal plains. Despite sharing the same origin and traditions, the settlements that grew on the top of the elven ruins were never united into a single realm. There were two main reasons for this. The first one, unlike the Empire and Bretonia, Tylea was fortunate enough in not being overrun by orcs and goblins in the aftermath of the War of the Beard, and the subsequent abandonment of the elven cities. This was due to the barrier provided by the high mountains on all sides. The Tyleans didn't have to struggle for survival with these savage races and fight for possession of their land. It is true that the Skaven did come to infest the smoldering ruins of the Blighted Marshes, but the invaders preferred to hide, seldom appearing in the surrounding lands. Civilized life, culture, and especially trade was able to flourish while the northern people studied only war. 
When those savage tribes did eventually break into Tylea, they only found populous cities with strong walls and well-equipped armies to resist them. The second reason is that Tyleans are very independently minded, strongly willed, and, some would say, impossible to govern by force. A Tylean sense of pride, liberty, and social loyalty is always first and foremost to his family, his immediate locale, and only then to the city. This means that any attempt at empire building within Tylea was bitterly opposed. Whatever the case, these settlements would eventually become very wealthy and powerful, and would, in time, become kingdoms in their own right. As the Tylean city-states grew out of trade and commerce, so too did the idea of expanding such trade routes to encompass not just their immediate territory, but the entirety of the old world and beyond. Eager to set up new trade routes, the merchants of Tylea have always been willing to finance great expeditions of exploration. Not only can this lead to new discoveries and increased profit, but it also removes a great many mercenary bands out of Tylea itself. In times of peace, this is seen as a good thing, because it means many unemployed mercenaries, who would otherwise spend their time wandering the cities of Tylea looking for trouble, are instead diverted towards more profitable pursuits. The Tyleans have always been willing to spend the money to make money, and are able to finance and equip such extravagant expeditions that other people might find impossible to undertake. Consequently, Tylea has become a haven of navigators, cartographers, explorers, and discoverers. Barely a month can go by without a major expedition setting off for Lustria, the Southlands, or overland to Grand Café. For the lucky few who actually met success, the rewards are immense beyond imagination. The most successful generals return as heroes, their ships stuffed with immense treasure, their journals filled with highly imaginative accounts of new lands, exotic goods, outlandish tribes, and their own heroic deeds during the journey. Many others don't return home at all, but set themselves up as rulers of new towns, cities, and even kingdoms where they live in the lap of luxury. Whatever the case, these expeditions have nonetheless opened a new age, the likes of which would change the face of the old world forever. The lands of Tylea, as I mentioned earlier, are not a unified nation. And, as such, the issues of government are administered by a small class of local wealthy individuals. In most cases, a single merchant family is preeminent in each of the Tylean cities at any given time. In republics, the power is shared more or less equally between several families. Often, where one household is more powerful than the others, the head of that family becomes the ruling prince of the city and thus such rulers are collectively known in Tylea as the Merchant Princes. There is no such thing as the hereditary right to rule, and so every Merchant Prince must watch out for rivals making a bid for power. It is quite usual for the ruler to be toppled from power by a rival contender from another mercantile family, close relatives, and even common citizens. Sometimes, an ambitious pretender to the princely throne will go as far as hiring out an entire mercenary army to oust his rival. It is a Tylean custom for anyone whose ancestors ever wielded political power to have both the right and duty to claim the title of merchant prince for himself. Anyone who rises to power, whether by intrigue, assassination, or force of arms, is certain to make a lot of enemies along the way. In Tylea, the tradition of getting even with your enemies is almost religious among the great families. This has given rise to the notorious custom of vendetta. Such vendettas is all that it takes for anyone to topple the rule and usurp his position, no matter how old the grudge may be. The principalities and the republics populating Tylea are a diverse lot, racked with discord and dissent. But although they have fought against each other for centuries, they will unite on one thing. They all agree that the Tyleans are the bravest warriors, most skilled artisans, and merchants of the world. The most notable powers and factions of Tylea are the rebellious Republic of Remus, the ancient Principality of Lucini, 
the turbulent principality of Trantio, the perfidious principality of Pavona, the serene republic of Verezzo, the decadent pirate principality of Sartosa, I actually did two videos on these guys, the once mighty principality of Miragliano, and the tormented principality of Tobaro. And this, my friends, has been what I wanted to tell you on the lands of Tylea for today. There's a good amount of stuff still left to be said though, and I will return to the topic in the near future with their unique military, individual city-states, and more. Are you a fan of the lands of Tylea? I can understand why you wouldn't be, as in the Empire they are considered as rather shady people. Nevertheless, do feel free to write down any thoughts and opinions you may have on them in the comments below. Was the episode informative or entertaining? In that case, please click the like button and subscribe for future content. And do click the bell notification icon too to stay a bit more up to date if you want. Thank you very much for watching and I wish you all an awesome day. Sigmar's blessings be upon you.